Hey, this is Carl Peterson. I'm here to teach you a little about coding in MATLAB and or FreeMAT. For some people, it might be a little bit too hard. And, I mean, you might get a lot of errors with it. But, with my assistance, maybe you'll be able to do a little better with my MATLAB crash course. So what I'm going to be focusing on today would be vectors, and vectors are extremely easy. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a value, a variable, pretty much any integer you want, and it's going to be this one right here. We're going to deal with a. And I want a to be from 1 through 5. So I'm going to go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And each little space separates the part of the vector, and what you do is a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's also easier ways to do this, and it makes it a lot easier. So let's say you're going to like 1,000. You're not going to want to type out each individual number. What you can do is you can go through 1, colon, 1,000, and it'll put you all the way there just by doing that. Now, you can also do a, an array of things along with this. I mean, you can put vectors within vectors, so let's start with vector, oh, uh, we could actually, yeah, okay, so let's go with vector meow is equal to, um, let's see, so vector meow going through 1 through 29. Now, I could also put vector a in there from earlier as well. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to have meow 1 through 29, or, well, I'm going to modify meow. So meow, right there, I'm going to have my original vector. So what it's going to do is, since meow is already saved, it pulls meow from before and pulls it right here. And then I can add vector a into this as well. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull the two different vectors and it's going to combine them into one. And it does exactly that. So it's going to go through 1 through 29 and 1 through 5. So now there's varying ways that you can make a large vector and space it out. So let's say you want to go every 3. What we can do here is we can do is you're going to have to have a start point. So let's say you have to start at 2. So you're going to start at 2. You want to go every three. This is going to be your interval right here, and this is going to be your endpoint. Let's go. Let's go up to fifty. So what that does is it literally goes from two every three all the way to fifty. Now there's other things we can do such as accessing elements, and that means that these are here. These are your elements of your vector. And let's say you want to know the fifth letter in there, or the fifth element within the vector. So what we can do here is go hello, five, and it will pull out the fifth element in there. That's the location. So it's literally going to count one, two, three, four, five, and at that very fifth one, it's going to pull out that one, that number right there, which is, happens to be 14. Now, we can also do other things such as accessing, I mean, we can access varying amount of material. So let's say we want to access like 5 like through 10 or something. So we can do just that. So I'm going to go from, so you don't have to pull out just one number at a time. You can pull out an array. And it pulled out numbers 5 through 29, which are or 14 through 29, which happen to be 5 through 10 locations. And we can also do, like, let's say, let's say wolf is equal to the numbers 5, 9, 23, 4, and 13. So that's what our vector is right here. 
we can plug that into the location's finder spot of hello. So I'm going to go with hello of wolf. And the index is out of bounds. So what happened there is one of the numbers is happens to be greater than what's like within. So I guess there's not 23 numbers within. So let's change our index right here. Let's remove this 23. And great, it gives me exactly those numbers within. So what it did is it pulled out, it went through the sequence, and it found the fifth value, it found the ninth value, found the fourth, and the thirteenth, and it pulled those out. And they happen to be right here. So vectors happen to have a varying amount of sizes. So what we can do is we can analyze those sizes. And let's say vector is equal to 20 to 30 or to 40 well I guess we're going to 40 so the vector goes from 20 to 40 what we can do here is we can analyze this with simple things such as the greater than so let's go with all values greater than 30 what it did is it went through all of these and it found that these ones over here happen to be greater than 30. And since they are, it gives us a 1. All those less than, it gives us a, a 0. So, I mean, that's just an easy way to tell. And what we can, we can do that with a varying thing. So let's say greater than and or equal to 30. If you want to have 30 inclusive. And it did exactly that, except, I mean, it just placed that 30 spot with a 1. So that means it's true. It happens to be equal to 30. And we can do all numbers equal to 30. So when we pull this through, there's only one 30 spot. So that's true. So yeah, it's equal to 30 right there, as well as not equal to 30. And there's only one spot that happens to not be equal to 30 again. So that's just the inverse property of equals. Now we can find, we can actually find which parts happen to be greater than 30. So let's take our vector and we're going to use this with find. And we're going to plug vector in here. And let's do less than 27 where all numbers less than 27. And it found the location spots of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now we can make a little bit more sense out of this as we plug it back into the original find spot where we go with our original vector. And basically what we're doing is we're plugging this format in here and we'll find all those like actual values that happen to be within that. So let's go find I forgot letters. Great, and it works. So what it did right here is we basically found the elements within that happened to be greater than 30 versus just the locations of them because the, all the find those is the finds the locations and what we've done here is we have plugged this in here and we basically used it as we did earlier to find the values and what it, and it found the one two three four five and six and seven and it basically pulled those out and made sense of them and these are the variables here that happen to be less than 27 if you're curious or on the edge of your seat just wondering we can also modify vectors. So with meow, we can add two to each spot if we would like to. Or let's say we can multiply each spot times two if we so like. Or, I mean, we could divide each spot by like, let's say 17. Now we got a whole bunch of nasty, nasty numbers right here. I don't want to deal with these numbers. I'm sure you wouldn't like to either. And what we can do 
is we can make a little bit more sense of them, or which ones actually are divisible evenly by 17. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to come up with a mod sequence. So right here, we're going to have And what it's done is each one of these numbers is a remainder. So what it did right here for each one of these is it divided it by 17. And if there is a 0, then that means that it is divisible evenly by 17. So that's the remainder for each one of them. I mean, 1 divided by 17. And then just it, ha it just goes all the way through until it gets to 0 again. So we can go a step further and let's say we have the remainders. And it does exactly that right there. I just named this little, that's our new thing. This is what remainders is equal to whenever I use it. It will always give me that. So let's find the locations of each one of those. So we're going to use the find that we used earlier. So what it's going to do right here is it's going to go through all the values and figure out which one is equal to zero. So it's going to, yeah, it's going to do exactly that. So wherever the location is equal to zero after it's been, I mean, divided up here by this one, it's going to give us the number. It's locations is equal to 17, which is the number. And we can actually shorten this all out, and let's do this with, it, we can all put this into one line, so let's go with meow of find, and then we're going to use your mod, and then let's go with, we're still using meow, 17, all numbers equal to zero. And same thing, that just all plugged in the one line. So basically what we did is we just did the find element from earlier. So we found the location. So we have the meow, and then it's plugging in to find that element, and it finds it, and then whichever one within there of the mod is divisible by 17 of the function 17, and which one's equal to zero, it will pull that out and it'll give you that number. So, that would be all for today, and that's just vectors in a nutshell. Thank you for 